Hey everyone, welcome back. This is the third video about drawing rock and stone texture from the texture tutorial series. On this week's tutorial, first of all, I'm going to be showing you how to draw rock texture on a geometric 2D shape and make it look 3D. Then in the next step, we'll go through learning some tips and techniques for drawing actual rocks and stones. If you haven't watched the previous video from this series where I show how to draw four different rock and stone textures, definitely check it out. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell icon so that you get notified about my upcoming videos. So let's get started. So I'm going to start off with drawing a circle for the outline and then I'm going to determine the light source. This one is lit from straight in front of it, so I put my light source on top right. And then I'm going to draw the shadow. So this part of the shape is perhaps going to be the brightest area. So I'll probably have a general highlight at this spot with a lighter value, or I can just use the color of the paper. So I'll put a general shadow on my sphere so that the circle resembles more of a 3D shape for now. Then I'm going to take my 6B graphite pencil and add some cracks here. It's like a mapping to know how this shape is going to be divided into different segments. So let's see how to break it down. So I'm going to break this shape down into smaller shapes using these wavy lines that resemble cracks. So basically I'm drawing these smaller cracks and I'm breaking the circle down into smaller shapes. I'm not following any pattern. This has to look natural and organic and random, so I'm just randomly drawing these shapes. I'm splitting the circle down into smaller segments and notice how I'm varying the thickness of the cracks. Some areas are thicker than the others and some areas are thinner. There's a nice variation. Make sure that you're not keeping larger segments only when you're breaking a larger shape down into smaller shape. The entire thing should not be made of only larger segments or only smaller segments. Make sure to keep a nice variation of a small, medium and large areas. I'm now using a 5B graphite pencil. You can also use a 6B or 4B. Those work too. Once I'm happy with the segments, finally I'm going to draw the shadows. But first I'm trying to outline the sphere to make it look cleaner. It doesn't matter if it does not look so neat and perfectly outlined. When drawing texture, we need to convey a feeling of randomness and messiness like the way they are in nature. You could also do this in the previous step before adding cracks. There's no difference actually. So I'm going to go ahead and add the base layer of shadow all over the shape. I'm using the same 5B graphic pencil. Then I'm going to add more shadows to my drawing. This stage is actually more time consuming. I'm mostly darkening the edges and corners of each section since it enhances the sense of three dimensionality. Now notice that I'm drawing the shadow in the side of the segments that are away from the light. So the areas that are farther away from the light are mostly covered in shadow and receive very little light. The areas that are closer to the light source receive a lot of light. As I mentioned, the planes farther from the light source are going to be shaded with darker values. So I use more of the pencil pressure for these planes and less for those planes closer to the light source. You can add some harder edges for the shadows like this one. So pay attention to the position of the light and shade each plane accordingly. Most of the brightest areas are concentrated in the middle, a bit tilted to the right, of course, not exactly in the middle. To have hard edge shadows, you can first draw a line, the same way we drew the line of termination, and then divide the shadow family from the light family. So keep some of these edges sharp, but not as sharp as the cracks. We can have multiple lines of termination in our shape for each section based on their position towards the light source and their form. So basically I'm carving out a more realistic 3D shape out of our 2D circle that we have started off with. I'm having some darker parts at the corners to show that they are deeper than the metal part. I'm shading these upper parts again according to the position of the light and I'm creating some gradation here. 
At the same time, I'm trying to have some harder edges for the shadows. I think I need to refine the cracks again because they're kind of getting faded into these two layers of shadow. So for the next step, we refine the cracks. I take my 6B graphite pencil again and refine the cracks, but this time I'm going to spend more time on them. I'm just going to go over these edges and give them nice and fine strokes. Make yourself ready to spend a lot of time for this step because it really requires patience to work with texture. The more time you spend on a drawing, the better the outline will be, especially if you're creating a realistic drawing. So get yourself ready for this to take a lot of your time. I'm still working on the cracks. You can add more cracks as you're trying to refine the older ones. You can fade the path of some cracks along the way and let the eyes of the viewers to complete it. Pay attention to the negative space as well as the positive space. Consider these black darker segments the shape of the cracks, as well as the surroundings. If the shape is appealing to you, you can continue with the rest of the drawing. If not, you can change it. After this, I want to refine the shadows a bit more, work on the details and shades, add gradation, sharpen some of the edges, clean the lines of termination, and generally make them finer. This is also going to take a lot of time, but this stage alone has a really crucial effect on the outcome of your drawing. So try to spend enough time on it. You can use a round brush for blending some of these shadows, but don't blend too much. We still want to keep the hard edges. You can use it on the softer shadows to enhance the sense of gradation. And then I'm going to add the highlights basically on the areas where I did not draw the shadows. With the use of a kneaded eraser, I'm going to add some highlights and some textures. I'm also drawing highlights along the cracks, the smaller and thinner cracks, mostly in the side that's facing the light. Creating lighter strokes near the edges or the cracks can really bring your drawing to the next level. These knee erasers are in fact lifesavers in realistic drawing. After adding highlights with knead eraser, I'll take my white polychrome colored pencil with a sharp tip to make some areas a little bit lighter to emphasize on the highlights.
And now what we're going to do is we're going to add some texture. So in order to differentiate it from other materials, we're going to give it some rough texture to make it look like a rock. Notice that I'm drawing the scratches and also adding some smaller cracks, even over the highlights. You can add some dark dots for this. I suggest using a darker pencil like a 6B or 5B. I prefer to use a 5B with a sharp cutted edge on the tip like this. You can achieve different strokes and lines by shaping the tip of your pencil in any way you desire. You can add some random lines even on the highlight areas. You can try different shading techniques here. Scribbling or hatching perhaps, maybe even stipples. We're going to draw some cracks and scratches and we're also going to highlight some random dots and strokes here. And of course, all of these cracks also get highlights of their own. If you look at the outer area of the circle, it is a perfect circle and it kind of looks artificial. So in order to make it more synchronized with the inner texture, I'm going to erase certain areas on the border of this perfect circle. The best spots for erasing are those spots where the cracks meet the border of the circle. So as you can see, as soon as I erase them, it stands out immediately. It's very important to understand how to create or how to draw something like this. How to paint texture and light up a complex or a complicated surface like this in order to be able to draw or paint rocks that we find in nature. When you break rocks down into their simplest forms, they can often form the shapes of squares, circles, and triangles. Remember that rocks are three-dimensional closed shapes. So drawing something like a cube, a cylinder, a sphere, or even a cone will much better represent what a rock actually looks like. Of course, this is just a start. You need to add a lot more detail to make it look more like a rock. Now, if you take the basic shapes, you're going to start to create a rock-like shape. For now, I'm just going to show you how each of these basic shapes react to the position of the light source. Now that we know how to create a rock texture and after we tried it on a solid geometric shape like a circle, it will be much easier for us to try it on an actual rock on a stone shape. Here's a fast way to visualize the form. Start the shape and draw the outline using simple lines. To simplify the shape, just find the closest geometric shape to your stone and use it as a guide. Decide on where you want your light source to be. Then add cross contours or wireframe. Add a hard shadow based on the light's position. Use more pencil pressure or a darker pencil for this step. My light source is again from top right, so I'm having my darkest values here. Then add soft shadows. These are actually the half tones of the drawing. Let's continue with the cracks and splits. Divide the shape in any way you prefer. You can have a reference photo to know where to put these cracks. When you want to practice something like a pro, I think the best thing you can do is to have an archive of your own references instead of searching them. Then finally, add some details, work on the textures and shading. Add some dots and some random squiggle darker marks and add some grass or maybe smaller stones to the background. With a rough idea of the 3D form of your rock surface, you can start to map any texture onto it. 
Of course, not all rock is rocks, if you see what I mean. A rock face may be flatter, but we still need to be able to show pattern and texture on the surface. For this, it's useful to have a library of texture ideas at your fingerprints. I mentioned this before in one of the videos from the texture tutorial series. After this tutorial, you should probably be able to draw and create different rock textures on almost any shape and form. So consider this as an assignment or a practice and discover some rock and stone textures on other basic shapes. Rocks are everywhere. They're so commonplace we neglect to give them much attention. Even the simplest rock shapes have form, which we need to understand before we can add surface texture. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and don't miss the next tutorial. Thank you friends. Bye.